Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of What's Brewing with Mobile Cup of Joe. Hey, I am your host for this evening, the Bearded Barista, and welcome to what, what looks to be a really fantastic, fun uh, show tonight. I'm really excited about it. We've got the mid-range flagship debate, uh, and Joe and Fred are going to kind of head that up with uh, the Alcatel, Alcatel One Touch and the LG G Stylo. But also, we've got our freshly brewed news uh, with some iPhone news and some Apple news coming up. So, uh, you know, we're not just only Android people here. We do have uh, a couple people that are iPhones and Apples and all that stuff. So we've got that coming up and uh, some press conferences and all of that. And what, what looks to be a really fun show. So thanks for joining us tonight and thanks uh, for listening. If you're listening on, on the podcast later or watching us live, however you're catching us, thanks for letting us be a part of your day or week or evening, whatever's going on for you. Uh, a few things before we talk about our host and things like that. Uh, if you want or have a question to ask, hashtag MCOJBrew on all the socials is the easiest way to find us. We're on all of those that accept hashtags, uh, Twitter, MySpace, Instagram, Google+, Facebook, all those, anything that takes a hashtag, hashtag MCOJBrew, but you can hit us up on the, uh, the YouTube event page, the Google Plus page, anything like that. Pretty much we're all over the place right now. So if you have a question or comment about anything we're talking about or something off the wall and you just want to throw it in there, go ahead, hit us up there, and we'll try to get uh, to you tonight or later on this week if you're catching up later. Um, so let's go ahead and start talking to some of the guys. I'm your host, Albie the Bearded Barista, and I'm going to go left to right. You may notice that Chuck is missing. He did have a uh, death in the family this week, so uh, kind, warm wishes, thoughts and prayers and all of that kind of stuff. So whatever you send to Chuck, just hit him up on any of the socials and tell him that uh, you hate that, you, that we missed him, but... Uh, Hope that everything is going well with family and all that. So we missed you, Chuck, and hope that uh, everything is going well with you and the family there. Um, but we'll go ahead and start with Back from the Dead. Fred, how are you, my friend? I am good, good. It's uh, been a quiet week up here in uh, in New Jersey. Um, I do have um, the LG G Stylo, which we're going to be talking about a little bit later in the show. Um and um, not too much else to report um, in terms of uh, what happened between last week and now. Okay, okay, very good. Yeah, I'm excited to hear about that phone and see that and all that kind of stuff. And then next up, until we get a better nickname for him, 2 a.m. Greg, how are you over there, my friend? I'm good, yeah. It's, uh, it's, um, the weather's looking pretty good over here, so it's been a, a good week of uh, spending some time with the family and uh, uh, getting a... a what you, you the little you can get of a tan over here, I suppose. Um, yeah, it's it's all good. I don't have a budget phone to to report on though, so I'm just gonna excited to hear what you guys think about the uh, the idol and the uh, uh, LG G Stylo. Yeah, yeah, looking good. Well, and we'll come back to you. I know we've got a bunch to talk about with you for. Uh, the Apple, what is it, the w, WWDC, I always say that backwards, I get I get kind of crazy with all that. So but don't worry, we'll have plenty to talk about with you and all of that kind of stuff soon. Next up is my good friend Tony from a new place. I haven't been able to talk to you since you moved in, so catch me up a little bit on that and everybody else. How are you, my friend? Um, I am doing, well, I'm doing a lot better now. Uh, I recently experienced kidney stones for the first time, and if you haven't experienced those yet, then don't, because they <laughs> suck. Uh, actually, it was the same night that I had an issue. We had to take my son to the ER, because we were worried, just new parent stuff. You know, he's fine. He just he just uh, had a little bit of a throwing up incident, and, and I liked the ER so much, I decided to visit it again at 4 in the morning uh, for my kidney stones. So. <laughs> Um, it's been pretty doped up since then. Today's my first day, real day off of the pain medicine, so it's been pretty nice. Um, but yeah, I'm actually in a different place. Uh, the last week I was having, or last week, the week four, I think, um, my first week in the new place, I was uh, on the show. I was in my normal at my desk, and today I'm in a mystery location because <laughs> I'm not going to open myself up to all kinds of jokes about where I am. But I am from the mystery location in Ohio, <laughs> the place that you shall not be named. So uh, yes, <laughs> very good, very good. Well, it's not a bathroom, if that's what anyone's thinking. So it's just <laughs> the bathrooms right there. Uh, but before the jokes get too crazy, we'll uh, go ahead and move on. But it's good to see you and good to talk to you. I don't think I called you by your nickname, Spec Sheet Tony. Good to see you. And also, we've got the main man in the middle, Mr. Mobile Cup of uh, Joe himself. How are you, my friend? Catch us up a little bit on your life. I'm actually doing really fantastic because today was my 
official last day of my junior year of high school, so I went in for like, like 45 minutes this morning, took my algebra exam, then left, so I am done for the year, <laughs> finally. Uh, so really looking forward to the summer uh, between my job and doing a lot of stuff with the channel. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really happy right now because I don't have to get up at 6, 5.30 in the morning anymore, so I'll sleep in until the really late time of 7 o'clock now because I'm a rebel like that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I've been doing pretty good. I've got the, somewhere here, the Alcatel One Touch Idol 3 to talk about for our mid-range flagship debate, uh, to talk about with Fred's LG G Stylo, so re really looking forward to that. And also, while we're catching up with me, I do want to mention that tonight's show is brought to you by, just like last week's, Audible.com. So Audible.com is home to over 150,000, actually 180,000 audiobooks because the numbers get bigger and bigger each day um, for you to try out and listen uh, on your iPhone, Android device, MP3 player, whatever it may be. And since you're watching tonight's episode of Mobile Cup of Joe's What's Brewing, um, just for watching our show, Audible is going to be so awesome and actually hook you up with a free audiobook and a free 30-day trial for their service by going to www.audibletrial.com forward slash mobile cup of Joe. Now, for me personally, I am currently listening to Jurassic Park on here to get myself in the mindset for Jurassic World in this ne next couple weeks here. A uh, classic sci-fi novel right here. I mean, it's got everything in the book. If you like dinosaurs, which, I mean, come on, who doesn't like dinosaurs? Um, science, there's some comedy in there, there's a bit of romance, pretty much everything in this book. Uh, fantastic stuff right there. So go on there to audibletrial.com forward slash mobile cup of Joe. Get any free audiobook you want, and then with that, a 30-day free trial for the service. Again, that is audibletrial.com forward slash mobile cup of Joe. And if you're watching this on the uh, Google Plus page on Google Plus, um, there's actually be a link to that in the showcase as well. So again, audible.com for over 180,000 free audiobooks. And get your free trial for the fifth time now. Go to audibletrial.com <laughs> forward slash mobile cup of Joe. And big thank you to Audible for sponsoring tonight's show. Excellent. Yes, thank you very much, Audible and the rest of the guys. Again, send some love out to Chuck. But let's go ahead and get started with uh, some freshly brewed news. Uh, Greg, we're going to jump straight to you because you are a man with Apple. Uh, to my knowledge, you um, you like them and you love them and you want nothing but <laughs> the best for them, just like the rest of us. No, Apple is really good at technology in general and all that. If you guys know me at all, you know I run on an Apple uh, MacBook Pro Retina 15-inch, so I'm all about some Apple, too. Just not a big fan of their mobile. But I'm excited to see what WWDC has for 2015. 2 a.m. Greg, catch us up on what's going on this year there. Yeah, it's um, it is Monday next week. They'll be having their usual um, WWDC, which is the developers conference for uh, everything at Apple really. So you'll get some iOS news, some some Mac news, and and things like that. Um, I mean, they, they, there's a few, quite a few, a bit that they're reported to to announce. You never really know. Same with Google I/O that. Um, What's going to come, but um, the the uh, the focus, by the looks of it, will be on iOS 9, which is due to fix a lot of the bugs that we've seen with with iOS 8, rather than introducing a, a shed load more features. Um, iOS 8's probably been the worst um, adoption rate for for Apple um, releases for a long, long time. So that that looks. Um, Good that they've kind of taken that on board and, and fixed a few things, uh, as well as obviously rolling out uh, updates to maps to um, improve public transport um, predictions and links and things like that, um, and, a, and a higher iCloud backend. So, so uh, a lot a lot more apps will use the iCloud rather than the normal um, iMap syncing like they they do at the moment. Um, but the the biggest thing will be Apple Music. They reported. Um, roll out of the Beats acquisition to to try and take on Spotify and and um, the the usual streaming sort of services, which is um, it, if they get it right, they they probably will take a lot of business away from from Spotify with with uh, iPhone users. Um, but what we'll actually see is is um, is a different story, uh, and also things like HomeKit. Um, with the upcoming Nest announcement, hopefully there'll there'll be something around there, um, and lots of other sorts of things. Um, 
with changing the the font and and things like that. Uh, also, the they're supposed to be taking on Google now, whether we'll see it at this WWDC or or, or not. Um, content, more contextual information for iPhone users because um, Google now kind of stands on its own at the moment. Uh, I know you guys all use Android, I think, and uh, <laughs> I get constantly berated for, <laughs> for even considering for an Apple device. So I know you're kind of sitting there going, yeah, 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 of course. <laughs> Yeah, well, I did, get... on, that, on that same note, I did hear that they're going to be looking into a, a pretty major bug in iOS that's been present since, I think, 2009, and they may not be able to fix it entirely, but they're going to get a lot closer um, in the bug being that it's not Android. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they've gotten closer with iOS 8, and I hear that yeah, they're going to get even closer. The rumors are that we should see some, some features that uh, arrived in KitKat. <laughs> Which is going to be legendary. <laughs> well, and the thing that the thing that bugs me is now they're talking about coming coming out with something that does what Google Now does, and Tim Cook is in the media this week being just I mean just insufferable about how they don't they don't monetize our data and they don't you know mine data on their customers or whatever he said. I mean just just a blowhard. And then you're like, yes, you do. Every company does. You just don't. That's just not your main. The, your main focus as a company. <laughs> yeah, without without a doubt, he went full uh, attack on Google this week with Google Photos, which uh, I think they've they've kind of rebuttaled and said, no, we, there's no chance we'll ever use any of your photos. Um, but they, sometimes it's not Instagram. <laughs> You uh, you kind of have to go. Okay, you are the CEO uh, of, a, of a huge corporation, but that's just it, surely everybody's just going to read that sort of news and go, no, just just no. Yeah. <laughs> you know the one that interests me the most is the Apple, you know, the Beats acquisition. So Apple Music, whatever they end up calling it, um, I think that really could. Uh, that's pretty much a, a sure deal at this point. Something like that's coming out, whether it be it gets announced this week or not or whatever, but. Um, I think that's got a really good shot at taking on Spotify and the rest of them. Um, I yeah. don't know. What do you What do you think, Fred or Joe? Ch- chime in on that that part. Well, you know, I'm just going to say from here, without getting into the specifics too much, um, as with everything Apple related, it's all going to be it, it's all going to depend on the marketing spin. I I, I don't think the quality of the uh, of the service, the cost of the service is going to be that dramatically different from what you can get in 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 Spotify, in Google Play Music. But um, I, th- I think it's all going to be about marketing spin. Just my gut feeling from here. Yeah. It's best. The Apple story. Well, I mean, if anybody, they're just. In, I mean, it's it's Apple. They have iTunes. They spearheaded digital music, so they're in the best place for it. The Beats, the music service that they had, was one of the coolest ones out there when I reviewed it forever ago. I enjoyed it the most. So yeah, I mean, I I think they're. I don't know. I guess in the best position to make that work and take on the Spotify's and the rest of them. Um, I don't know. What do you think, Joe? Yeah, I'm sure with it just being Apple, like, you know, if a product or a service carries the Apple name, like, it's bound to be very successful. Um, but I'm just really uh, really interested to see how it compares, especially with Spotify, with that huge update they announced, I think a couple weeks ago now, with the new service, how they're going to be offering um, audio podcasts on there, and now some sorts, different types of video services as well, kind of similar to a YouTube type of thing, then also with Spotify running, where it actually tracks your tempo while you're running to you know, give you music that matches your speed while you're running. Um, Spotify has a lot of awesome stuff in the works, and when that update launches um, you know, for Android and iPhones, I think that's going to probably be their biggest competitor because there's other streaming services out there, but if you just look at like the base, the basics of them, um, Spotify is kind of the king right now. So I think it's going to do well just because of you know how, how well Apple products and services do, but I think they're going to have a bit of competition with Spotify once that big update for them does come out. Yeah, I mean they they've taken the angle of of keeping the how Beats did it and and focus on like the curation of playlists and uh, radio stations and and taken uh, obviously they've taken a couple of DJs from over here Zane Low um, to to help them with curating playlists and I mean I never got to use the the Beats because it it never made it over to to the UK but from what I understand it was it was all about those kind of automatic playlists recommending you new music um, and cultivating sort of playlists depending on, on what you wanted to listen to. 
Well, and I think that's like what's what's key because all of them have music, and for the most part, most of them have all the same songs, other than a few like record labels or artists like have exclusives or whatever. It's the it's the radio stations and the tempo changes like Spotify has got that I think right. sets them apart. So. Uh, I guess time will tell. Now, Greg, another question for you about the WWDC. I keep wanting to call it that. It sounds like a wrestling, like the WWE. WWDC. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's yeah. going down. I'm not joking. Yeah, we get Tim, Tim Cook on stage in like his like, tight spandex shorts. And, <laughs> the and, uh, job, yeah. he's, just got, he's just got one more thing, and then he, he rock bottoms someone through a table. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the one more thing. Now, is this where we announce new iPhones, or is this a different? Topic? No, th- this this is mainly a bit like Google I/O was okay. this year. It will be mainly develop developer focused. There'll be a separate event, usually September sort of time, for the iPhones for uh, the real sort of nitty gritty. They'll they'll announce some things similar to they did with the watch. They they'll. Uh, they're going to talk about Force Touch, which will be in iOS 9, ready for the um, upcoming iPhone 6s, I would presume. Um, so they'll be, they will touch on bits and pieces, but we won't see any new hardware um, in terms of iPhones anyway. Uh, I don't think there's, they're expected to announce anything hardware related. Gotcha. Now Force Touch, or in that what you said, Force Touch, is that the right term? Yes. That's yeah. the coolest thing ever. I love that. I, I wish everything had that. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I've only really used it on the on the Apple Watch um, because I literally just replaced my MacBook the week before they announced it. Um, <laughs> nice. but it, it. It just adds. It, a lot of people get confused with just like a, a, a touch and hold, but it's not. You kind of press through. The, the it's kind of like another layer of touch. You've got a tap, and then you've got like a force touch to. To, to add another layer of options, which I guess on a tiny screen it is better. How it's going to work on the iPhone, I would presume it will be related to fast forwards, rewinds, and, and things like that. Sure, sure. Extra option. I, but yeah, it's really cool. I've seen a, seen a bunch of stuff about it. I'm like, yeah, I want that. <laughs> it's one of, the, one, one of the few times that Android people get to say, I want iPhone stuff. But uh, it, to me, it's just... I don't, really think, I don't think that ever happens, does it? <laughs> Even if there was something, Android users would go, yeah, but we had widgets for... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we had them three years ago. Yeah, Ooh. exactly, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we get very fanboyish this time of year around any conferences and all that. It's like, well, we did it first. Who cares? Who does it better? Yeah. Who has more time with it? So. I, I think I had to mention it at least four times before we agreed to put it in the Google Doc to talk about it for the show. <laughs> once, iOS, once iOS reaches maturity and there and it's pretty much on par with Android, then the last thing is going to be, well, we had phones with curved screens. Yeah, first. absolutely. Yeah. Still, we, we have to, the thing the thing that bugs me is like, okay, touchscreen computers. How about that? Not not iPads. <laughs> how have they how have they ignored that for so long? So I'll just start attacking other parts of the company. I don't care. Doesn't have to be iPhone. Yeah, but Tim Cook's got rubbish hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's well, always the, 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 the w- argument. Go ahead, friend. WWC is the Worldwide Developers Conference. Is that correct? Doesn't even say Apple in the title. Uh, just worldwide. No. Yeah, it's like the World Series. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Very good. Hey, well, speaking of Apple and iPhones and all that, Tony, you've got some news about uh, subsidized iPhones, right? Yes, yes. Um, well, you guys remember when iPods came out, and then they became really popular, and the white earphones was a status symbol. If you had the iPod white ear, I knew friends. I had friends who would buy just the fifty dollars set of headphones, or forty dollars maybe at the time, set of headphones, and use them with whatever their cheapy MP3 player or cell phone was at the time, um, because they liked the white earphones. They were the status symbol. They were the thing that you saw them dancing with, you know, black and white in the commercial with the bright background. Um, well, as because they they weren't they haven't been a status symbol as much lately because I've, iPods have gone down in price and iPhones are available at subsidized price. I, Apple realized that poor people were getting their devices and they didn't like it. So, <laughs> no, I'm I'm just totally kidding. But uh, apparently, yes, AT and T is not going to be subsidizing iPhones anymore. They will be, and I know through the Apple Store. They are already not offering subsidized pricing for iPhones um, on any carrier. 
I believe, and AT&T has actually officially said they are not subsidizing the price of iPhones at all anymore. Well, um, which I just want to correct. Sorry about. I just want to correct you though. For the uh, carrier thing, you can get to your contract still with Sprint and Verizon. Uh, oh, okay. But, I thought another one yeah, I read you, on nine to five Mac. That one I thought said that you could that they did away with it completely from the Apple Store. Maybe they just worded it badly. Um, but yeah, so they're going they're going the direction of T-Mobile and just asking for installment plans, which is really what you should be doing um, rather than signing a contract anyway. Because um, I would much rather buy out the phone and then sell the phone and know that I at least own my equipment and didn't sign my life away to a contract. Uh, you know, so it's it's just I think it's better, but a lot of people aren't going to like it, if especially if you're in a place where you only have the choice of one carrier. So there's no reason not to be in a contract, and so on and so forth. But it does sound like um, I, I and I'm and it is suggested that other carriers will be following suit because we really don't know why only iPhones would be um, the first to go for subsidized pricing from from AT and T. There's no really indication. That other devices, because we have other, we have other iPhone priced devices. You know, the Galaxy Note Edge, the uh, Galaxy S6 Edge, the Galaxy S6. These are all high priced phones, so it's not like they're doing it for just high priced phones. Um, it's just the iPhone so far. Although I think the iPhone is the only one that can have over a thousand dollar price tag for the single device, um, the six plus. You know, the 128 can probably, but. Um, it is a very interesting development, and I'm really interested to see what happens. Undoubtedly, people will still buy them. Um, their their sales aren't going to suffer for that because people who want iPhones want iPhones. Um, but maybe the people who aren't sure what they want, maybe this will push them into getting an Android. So we can only, as Android users, we can only hope. <laughs> hope to make the right decision. <laughs> it is interesting because AT&T and iPhone, they used to be, I mean, they were just two people yeah, they out there. Yeah, they're the... So, yeah. Only for carriers for a while to have the iPhone. Yeah, yeah. For them to be the first ones to pull subsidized pricing for it, it is kind of an odd move. Um, well, interesting to see where we go with it. Yeah, well, we've been hearing rumors and talks for probably over a month or two now that AT and T's been looking to get rid of contracts completely for all of their devices. So, um, I think we we had heard rumors originally that we were going to start to see that the beginning of June, but it's June fifth already, and AT and T still offers you know to your contracts. But if you go to AT and T's website, if you go on there, like you're going to buy a new device. The first thing that pops up on there um, as a payment for it is your AT&T Next plan. Like, if you can still get a two-year contract if you buy a phone on their website, but you have to, like, choose the option because by default it's showing AT&T Next. So it's obvious that the carrier is encouraging people to go to their Next plan, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see AT&T completely drop contracts by the end of the year. So I think this is just, you know, getting rid of iPhones with contracts once I do that. I don't think... that'll This will be, like, the biggest hurt for them. Like, once they... People are okay, the iPhone's... You can't get them with contracts anymore. It won't be as big of a deal when they have Android devices that you can't get contracts with them anymore either. Well, I know that when I when I was uh, when before we moved here and we were looking to move and possibly would have ended up moved out of T-Mobile's um, coverage area, I looked at Sprint and, and AT and T just to, to and Verizon just to compare prices. And when I went to Verizon and AT and T, I got pretty much the same story. They both wanted me to get on the next plan and do a payment plan for the phone. And it was all even with a payment plan for the phone on bill. It was always cheaper than the equivalent option for signing a contract. And then mm. signing the contract for the phone, I would want it would still be like one ninety nine out of pocket for the phone. And then I'm paying more a month than I would have been paying with a bill and a and a payment plan without signing. A so I really, they're really to encourage people not to sign contracts, which I think is odd because for Verizon especially. Why would you, you know, you're, at this point, for Verizon, you've got so many customers in the U.S. locked in who can't use another service. But for AT&T, there's nobody locked in who can't use another service because you've got straight talk, cricket, tons of MVNOs that use your service. Mm -hmm. um, there's just not as many Verizon MVNOs, and they're not as good with good prices. But you've got all these other options, so why are, aren't you trying to lock people in for as long as possible? Give discounts for longer contracts, you know, give higher subsidies for longer contracts, but they, they're not doing it. I don't, I don't know if they're just trying to keep up with T-Mobile, because John Ledger is is just, just take, that. just, yeah, I can't even use the, the metaphor I'm thinking right now, but he's he's really screwing <laughs> with the, the homeostasis we had with cell carriers in the U.S., Um <laughs> Uh, so, so we'll see. I don't know, but it's very interesting that this is what we're seeing with with iPhone first and nothing else. 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and that's that's the part that gets it. You know, like yeah, I see where we're eventually get off of contracts, but iPhone first, especially with AT and T, kind of kind of odd though. So we'll see what happens. I'm I'm, I'm sure they have a a big plan in place and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, all right, so Greg, you're handling all of our uh, wrestling entertainment, and so from the WWPC, <laughs> Nest, uh, recently acquired by Google, also has a press conference coming up. Speak a little bit about that. Yeah, I, I kind of touched on it earlier. They, uh, they they kind of secretly started inviting people to an announcement on the 17th, um, and then in, in true blog style, everyone lost their minds and... and made up loads of stuff and <laughs> went absolutely crazy uh, about stuff. I mean, I, I've I've seen rumors about, oh, they're going to take to the stage and arrive, announce the, the new version of uh, of Google Glass and all stuff like that. I was just shaking my head. But it, it, it's going to be an interesting one because they, they posted a, a job listing for a head of audio um, supposedly a little while ago. So, uh, and, and they're, they're about... Yeah, nested. Yeah. So whether it's going to be a new version of the thermostat or or home automation system, I, I guess it should be. It's bound to in, incorporate the the Project Brillo stuff at, at I/O without a doubt. Um, and um, let's hope that it's kind of a wider rollout of their work with Nest program, so we can see some some real ho home autom automation. Um, but what it is, we can only sort of speculate. Um, I, I can't see it being a new version of the thermostat because it's, it's still kind of selling at the, the normal sort of price. So it's bound to be something else. Any thoughts? What I would wonder, or what I would like to see, and you guys who heard me talk about the Amazon Echo a couple weeks ago are probably going to stone me for this, but um, <laughs> I, you, you guys, did you ever get uh, yeah. Gmail gives you messages and stuff that you can talk to, and it'll video call people for you. And it's just a little robot that turns its head to look at you, and it, you know, it's your personal assistant at home. It doesn't actually move around, but do you guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. It's got kind of a Amazon Echo quality where you can talk to it, and it talks back, and it'll deliver messages for you. Anyway, um, if Nest came up with something like that to manage all of your connected Nest devices. And you could, from any room in your house, just have them wired up with microphones um, connected directly to Google. Scary. Uh, no, but if you could have, them, have it wired up with microphones and say, you know, Nest uh, set the temperature to 76 degrees, not that anyone would ever actually say that, um, that would be pretty no, cool. Do head of audio. I don't know if that, if that would be, the head of audio would be working on the feedback to you from the system or, you know, mic or both, uh, but that'd be pretty neat. You can kind of do some of that stuff with Echo already with a Wemo and the Philips Hue. Like you can say like Echo, or Alexa, whatever. Like turn on the lights in the room or turn up the garage, like open the garage door. Like there's already like some home automation stuff that Amazon linked in with different like home automation technologies that like just link in with the service. So that yeah, I remember that kind of quote. You can there. say, I remember that quote. You can say, uh, what was it? Wash the car, or make me breakfast. You won't be able to do that stuff. But I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, Fred, you've done a bunch of work with AI, you know, specifically Microsoft and all that. I don't know where where you think this is going with the Nest uh, announcement. Um, good question. Um, I have not gotten too much. Well, I haven't gotten any experience yet with uh, with home automation or any any smart uh, appliances and so on in my house. But um, I, I would have to suspect that it's uh, moving more in the direction of centralized control of uh, and, and tying more and more things into a system that you'll be able to manage from, from one point, um, even remotely. Um, and th there's a lot going on in that. And, it, and it's, uh, of course, it's, it's scattered the different manufacturers, different systems. Um, Google and Nest uh, working in tandem um, I can only think that they're going to be looking to, number one, um, get things um, more centralized, and number two, put out some kind of an interface that, that other manufacturers can plug their devices into, um, some kind of an API that, uh, um, you know, wh whether it's a, a, a um, I, I don't know, audio devices, 
uh, stoves. I saw a smart stove at, uh, at at CES unveiled in New York City last fall that you can uh, you can not only program but you can basically call home when you're on your way driving home from work uh, uh, from your phone and get things going. So I, I, I would be looking for just more uh, more integration and an interface for more um, outside devices to plug into. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Especially with the uh, Google Now API opening up to some other third-party stuff and all that kind of stuff. Good timing for integration and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, I mean, they, they, their work, works with Nest Program integrates with a lot of um, manufacturers of things like Smart Things and, and things like that. But I, I could see Google kind of trying to tie things together, maybe with like a Nest Hub similar to the Smart Things move, yeah. just so they, they can kind of control the middle of the system and, and kind of that be the one that, that talks to everybody else rather than being um, just the thermostat that kind of sits on the edges. Right, right. It's the, uh, the Google Echo coming out. <laughs> All right, I'm so let's kind of yeah. do what? I'm surprised they haven't released something similar already. I can uh, really see me that. Me too, honestly. Honestly, I really am too. All right, and Joe, talk to us a little bit about uh, you got some video game news and also ch share a little bit about your recent acquisition, if you will. Yes. So, um, TLD on YouTube, if, I'm sure if you watch like tech videos, you've probably seen him somewhere before. Um, but he partnered up with Slick Raps on Twitter, apparently, to give away a uh, PlayStation 4 console with a custom Iron Man skin on there. Um, from Slick Raps. So I saw that on my Twitter feed, uh, like, what was it, Monday afternoon at school. So I'm like, okay, retweet to like possibly win it. I never win anything, so I retweeted it. And um, that evening I got home like 7 or 8 o'clock, and then I see the saying that congrats, the PS4 winner is Joe Marin 1. So now that I finally, well, I've had my PC to play games, but since I'm like going to be a console owner once again, I'm trying to like soak up all the gaming news that I've missed out on um, <laughs> since I haven't had like a true console. So I'm very pumped for that. And if you want to play any games with me on my PlayStation 4, when I do get it either Tuesday or Wednesday next week, I'm keeping my old account for my PS3. Um, so the username is frdrika97. Don't ask about that. Um, but yeah, go ahead and add me on there because I want to keep my trophies and all my friends that I got on there still. So if you want to play some games with me and Albie, hopefully we can get some maybe Twitch streams going this summer and have a yeah. lot of fun doing that. I yeah, and if, if Stanley's listening there can send us some PS4 so we can all play together, yeah. There we What's go. That? Instead, Sony should send us some PS4s. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Sony's watching this right I now. I was the that. I remember how surprised I was that you won that because I actually saw it and I, he said I don't have a PS4 and I looked at him I'm like well then why did you enter a giveaway for one of these slick wraps? <laughs> He's like no dude I won a PS4. I'm like oh <laughs> I didn't dream like you know just not where my mind goes. That's a, that's an awesome giveaway to win. Yeah. My wife just won a massage. I'm thinking man I gotta I gotta start <laughs> entering giveaways online. I just exactly. hate the spam. <laughs> <laughs> well it's worth it at some point. But um yeah so anyways uh. Aside from that, there was actually a pretty interesting announcement that I'm going to uh, very cleverly tie in with you know mobile gadgets and Android stuff. Um, but if you've been following like video game news at all, you've probably heard something about Steam machines before. So if for some reason you're not aware of them, if you're just not in the gaming community, Steam is basically the biggest service for PC gaming, for selling games, playing games online. And they are coming out this fall, finally, with Steam machines, which are basically their own consoles that are still technically computers, but they're running the Steam OS, which is Steam's own kind of operating system for PC gaming with their service, that they're finally going to launch to consumers across the country uh, later this fall. Um, so the Steam announced today that if you, pre you can now pre-order the official Steam machines. Uh, if you do that, you'll be able to get it October 16th, but we will see these devices hit retail shelves on November 10th. So if you go to That's Steam's price. website... Well... Well, Tony, if you uh, get through the rest of the, the story here, we got some details on that. Um, but right here you see the Steam controller, which is some fancy tech going on there. It doesn't look like a controller you've seen before because it's made to work with more PC-like controls. That's going to go for $4.99. The Steam Link, which I believe we actually talked about on the show once before, is essentially kind of like a Chromecast for PC gaming. You kind of just link it to your HGTV and you can stream games running at 1080p. Um, that work with your current PC at your house. Now, if you want to get a full-flown Steam machine, Steam isn't actually making one themselves, but they're working with different manufacturers to create these. Um, so you'll be able to plug these in your TV like a set-top box, kind of like a NVIDIA Android TV console. 
Um, two of the big ones we've seen so far from Alienware and S Cyber Power PC with the Cyber. Um, both of these devices are a little expensive when you compare them to something like Android TVs we've seen so far. The Alienware going for $449 and the Cyber starting at $499 with different configurations being available for each of them. Now, I'm comparing these to Android TV devices because we did see NVIDIA's Shield Android TV kind of console thing that's uh, cost, I believe, $199 that you can buy additional controllers and remotes and things like that. But that uh, NVIDIA Android TV console actually has some pretty powerful um, specs in it. So I know that these Steam machines aren't t technically geared toward the same market at all um, since they're definitely going to cost more and have more intensive specs. And you can still technically stream Netflix and things on there like that. Uh, but they're definitely geared more towards gaming. So I just want to get your guys' opinions on this if you think these Steam machines are kind of going to hurt the Android TV market with the ones we see like from NVIDIA that are focused heavily on gaming, or if you think that these two kind of different micro consoles, if you want to call them, um, have audiences of their own that they're going to compete with versus kind of going for the same target group. I don't think that that we're going to see any crossover between Android TV and Steam machines just because Steam machines is a much niche market. And that's saying a lot because the Android TV is already a really niche market. Um, so, <laughs> but it, either way, um, I think what we'll see, the interesting thing I'll be seeing, the thing I'm interested in seeing, sorry, with the Steam machines would be if people are creating their own machines with some the same you know, chipset and configuration and, and loading SteamOS themselves, because if I'm not mistaken, SteamOS is just uh, a version of Linux. So that would be pretty interesting, you know, kind of the way you might do a Hackintosh, yeah. you know, get your own same chipset computer and load it up yourself. Um, but Alvi, you're, you're, you're into gaming. What do you think about the crossover between in, with between uh, Steam machines and then the newer, higher-powered Android TVs? <laughs> well... <laughs> I think it's just a whole bunch of different ones that can kind of coexist. Uh, I was super excited when the rumor was Nintendo was partnering with Android for their next console. Oh, Nintendo yeah. shot that down in between. Um, I thought that was going to like just destroy the world. I was excited. Uh, but I think all of these, they, Steam people are going to get the Steam. Android people are going to get the Android. I think I think there's room for everybody for as far as games go right now. Until somebody comes out with like a Nintendo Android, like some partnership like that, where it'll just kind of be the de facto standard, but until then, I think I think there's room for everybody in just such a small market, and everybody just does their own little thing over there. Me. So the next mm -hmm. next version of Android N Nintendo, you heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, because the code name for Nintendo's new console is the NX, and everybody's like, it's a Nintendo Nexus, and everybody flipped out. <laughs> uh, people will run with anything, so you know. This is yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking of games, did you, Alvy, did you see the Fallout 4 trailer? I know that's not part of the notes, but... <laughs> <laughs> I have not, actually. I've never got Alvy. a Fallout. Alvy. I, I trade in my gamer card now. I'm I need, not, uh, I, I, it's just not my thing. I, need a, I haven't even watched the trailer. Um, I won't lie. Summers are busy for me in real life, <laughs> and so I miss out on a lot of video game news and trailers and all of that kind of stuff. So no, uh, slap my hand now, punch me in the face later. <laughs> I have not seen the trailer yet. I'll fight you at WWDC SmackDown. WWDC. <laughs> <laughs> Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> hey, Alvy, what's your opinion? It doesn't matter what your opinion is. <laughs> <laughs> what's your opinion? We'll buy it. No, I haven't. We'll buy that too. <laughs> oh, All right. Back, back on topic. Back on track. You guys are easily distracted. Uh, you guys are like... Like cats with something shiny. Joe, while you're talking, um, I do want to move off the video game just, quick. Before just don't I get out the laser pointer. <laughs> Ooh, shiny, a squirrel. Um, I do want to get off the of video games before I completely lose all of my credibility um, because I do want to get to this uh, budget discussion roundtable. We're running low on time. Uh, Joe and Fred are going to discuss the LG G Stylo and the Al Alcatel One Touch. Joe, you've been talking for a bit. Fred, I'm going to push to you first. Um, if you want to go ahead and start with your, your bit of it, go ahead. Sure, sure. Um, just as a quick preview, um, Joe and I are going to have uh, not not exactly a, uh, a rivalry here, but um, we're going to do kind of a side by side comparison of two budget phones, both in a in a true budget price range. Um, and the phone that I got, which I received from uh, my friends over at Sprint, is the LG G Stylo. I was kind of hoping the name was 
was stilo, as in uh, the French pronunciation of the word, but everybody seems to be calling it the stylo, I guess, like the stylus. And what this is is a, uh, a nice large-sized phone. It's a 5.7-inch phone, um, very reminiscent in form factor to um, the LG G3 and G4. Um, similar design on the back, similar really in, in every respect. It's a, it's a nice slim looking phone and um, they're, they're selling it for 200 bucks, 199 through uh, Sprint and Boost Mobile and I think it's similar on one or two other carriers as well. AT &T and T-Mobile, sorry. Uh, T-Mobile, yeah. Um, it, with, with some slight differences apparently, but uh, which we'll get to in a moment. But um, I guess let's first let's take a little bit of a, of a look at the specs of the phone just to get an idea of what you're getting physically for your mm -hmm. 200 bucks. And um, as we said, it's a 5.7 inch phone. It does um, it, it is current. It's running Android Lollipop 5.0 or 5.0. One or 5.02 um, hasn't upgraded past that, and and has not gotten an update in the in the week or so since I got the phone. It's got an 8 megapixel rear facing camera, a 5 megapixel front facing camera, um, and um, the cameras are getting kind of mixed reviews. Um, as far as what I can tell, the front-facing camera, and I'm not a I'm not a big selfie kind of guy. I'm not uh, um, putting pictures of my photogenic face out all over the place. But I did I did take a few, and it's it's a little it's a little weak on on that side. The, the rear-facing camera is only eight megapixels, and we, we've seen a lot more than that out there. However, it does have laser autofocus, um, which I loved on the G3, and um, and it, and it it does a decent job for what it is. I, I went out and uh, was I, I haven't done the full review yet, which will have some photos that I take on this. Um, but I, I did took some in the house, took some outside of the house earlier this evening, and and they're not bad for what it is. A um, couple of points, uh, one one point in particular on the on the camera is that there is no. Um, setting to change resolution. It's uh, the, on the only thing that you can change on this is aspect ratio, which is which is kind of odd, but um, again, it's a budget phone. Um, I think the purpose here is to get a, a working functional phone that's that's gonna run um, and, and do a good job at what it does. So um, moving right along, going down the specs, um, it's got a 1.2 gigahertz quad-core processor, which is the Snapdragon 410, um, which does, from what I can see, a pretty decent job on uh, on a phone of of this size and uh, and and this power. Um, screen is nice. It's Gorilla Glass 3. It's only 720p, but it does look pretty darn good. It's IPS. Um, so it's it's HD IPS, and I don't know how well this is going to show, but it's it's not bad. Um, it's it's very sharp, and colors look pretty darn good, um, especially for what we've seen in some budget phones before. I don't know if that comes through at all. You're just get, it looks like I'm just getting a glare of white on this, but there will be some good photos in the uh, in the print review when we get to it. Um, I don't want to dwell on the specs too long here. That's uh, spec sheet Tony's department, and, and <laughs> Joe, is, Joe is waiting in the queue patiently. Um, there is a GPU, which is the Adreno 306. And uh, interestingly, this is, in, in some respects, very similar in spec to the HTC Desire 510, which, uh, which I reviewed and really did not like about a half a year ago. Um, in terms of the the chipset configuration, but um, main difference there, and really the main thing that I disliked about that uh, Desire 510 was that it only had four gigabytes of storage, and by the time the operating system itself was loaded in uh, and and a couple of apps, um, you were pretty much choked. This this is at least got eight gigabytes. It's got room for an SD card. Um, I think up to 32 gigabytes. 
Um, so it's got plenty of breathing room there. Um, let's just see if there's anything else that I've overlooked as far as specs. Oh, um, 3,000 oh, yeah. milliamp battery, um, which oh, is wow. which is nice. And considering that it's only a Snapdragon 410 that it's powering, and it's only a 720p screen, um, it's plenty of power to run all day long. I've carried this around for about a week, and it's always got plenty of power left at the end of the day. I'm, I'm not pushing it, I'm not gaming all day on it, but um, for ordinary use, um, it's, it's perfectly serviceable. Um, it's got, and again, this is not going to show pretty well here, it's got, if you've used any other LG phones or, or looked at any other LG phones, it's got the LG um, UI, which I, I kind of like. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a, a stock Android fan, but um, theirs is a, a simple and scaled-down UI compared to some of the other skins we see out there, and it's now been updated to uh, Lollipop and, and a little more material-looking. Uh, so in that respect, it's a, it's a comfortable... Um, Comfortable interface, not a lot of clutter, even in spite of the fact that this is a Sprint Boost mobile phone, um, and they do load a lot of junk on there. And again, this is not going to show too well. Um, but um, as far as performance on the phone, um, seems to work well. Everything works. Um, it's not a super high performance phone um, like some of the true flagships that we're seeing out there, but for 200 bucks, it's definitely a service serviceable phone, um, and it's available both on, on prepaid and postpaid plans um, over at Sprint, and I'm not sure exactly how that's working on other carriers, but um, I would say that, and we're, this is going to segue into a question that we'll probably get to after Joe talks about the Idol 3. Um, if you're not a person that needs a cutting-edge phone. This is a perfectly serviceable device, and I, I don't find it lagging. I don't find it um, um, dragging in any way, and, and unlike some other cheap phones, it, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't feel choked and, and sluggish. Um, so I, I can give a, a seal of approval for this as, as a $200 phone, and I'll pass the, uh, pass the mic over to Joe. Well, maybe maybe you mentioned this. Um, how much RAM does it have? You know, that's. Oh, opinion. um, sorry. Uh, you, no, I did not mention it. And of course, uh, there's your question. Um, it has got one gigabyte of RAM. At least the device that I saw does. But apparently, the T-Mobile version, and perhaps the AT&T version, um, have two gigabytes of RAM. Oh, cool. All right. But well, um, yeah. So, you know, I think more the T-Mobile version is a little bit more expensive too. I think it's almost three hundred. Okay. Yeah, it's like two sixty or something. Yeah. Oh, and um, the the other I'm sorry, the other thing I wanted to comment about this was the the stylus itself, um, from which the phone takes its name. Um, having seen the uh, the Samsung Galaxy Note and Note Edge, which has um, I, I couldn't say that I was a real fan of the stylus. Um, I don't know how much I would use it, and it didn't prompt me to go out and buy one. Um, but the stylus has some interesting functionality to it. It's got a button um, that that does some stuff. You can hover over the screen and get some additional effects and additional functionality. Um, the, stylo, the stylus of the stylo here is just a plain old touchscreen stylus. You can get one at, you know, at any drugstore for, for a few bucks. Um, I don't know that it's enough to really make uh, uh, name the phone after, and the only thing that's unique about it is that the phone has a slot to store the stylus. Um, so, you know, I, you know LG, I, I've been a fan of your products, but um, I don't know that that's enough really to brand a phone over. Well, One so thing cool. I want to... Sorry, real quick. One thing I wanted, I would like to do is I have a blue phone that I'm going to be reviewing, but Fred, I may send it to you to borrow after you use the stylo because it's pretty much the same specs as what you said. It's just a smaller screen, five inch screen. Um, but other than mm -hmm. that, it's almost exactly the same, and it gets LTE. So um, I'll have nice. to get your opinion since it's similar, and it'll be ninety nine dollars at launch. But uh, you'll hear more about that when it's actually announced. I'll have more to say about that. Sorry. Secret Go ahead, Tony. Cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
I was going to say it's pretty impressive. Like, you can get that much of a display because usually we see, like, larger phones tend to cost more. So it's pretty impressive, like, 199 on Boost Mobile anyways. You get a stylus, which may not be, you know, that fancy, and a 5.7-inch display um, for that price. Now, does the display still look pretty good, like 720p on such a large canvas like that, or does it look kind of cheap? Um, it does not look... It, to my eye, it does not look cheap. Um, and... Um, again, this is not going to show on screen here, but when uh, when I do the print review, um, I'll certainly include some screenshots and some photos taken from another device, so we can get uh, we can get give the viewers and readers an idea of, of what that looks like. But I, I, I think it's a it's a completely serviceable and, and enjoyable display. Awesome, well, and Joe. The the predecessor to your mom's phone uh, had a 720p six inch display, and I always found that to be really really nice. So, I think I think we're pretty good with 720p unless you need the if, unless you're a resolution junkie. Well, she became a resolution junkie and got the Idol three, so that's now okay. her Wait, phone. The <laughs> Idol three, the Idol three 4K Quad HD rather. Well, it's 5.5 inch 1080p. So six inch p. The one before hers was 720. All right, sorry. Anyway, a, a tale for another day. Yeah. Well, segueing into uh, the second phone, though, for the kind of mid-range flagship debate we have going on here, um, I have got the Alcatel One Touch Idol 3, which you've probably heard quite a bit about if you follow any you know, tech YouTube channel or website, because Alcatel announced this at CES, and at the CES when they announced it, like they showed it off, but they never mentioned specs, and me at Hall thought, yeah, it's a pretty cool phone. Um, because the big thing it had going for it was the fact that it is completely reversible, so you can flip it upside down, and the phone will completely rotate, because since you have dual front-facing speakers, there's actually a microphone um, in both the top and the bottom, so you can still make phone calls and do whatever you want to do, um, no matter which way the phone is you know, oriented. Aside from that, though, in just general specifications, we've got a 5.5-inch display. Again, not going to show up that great on handouts, but 1920 by 1080p, which gives us 401 pixels per inch. It's honestly a really good-looking display. It is LCD, so you're not going to get you know, as bright of colors as a, on a Super AMOLED panel like you're going to find on a Samsung Galaxy S6 or something like that. But viewing angles are still really nice. It gets considerably bright. It gets very dim, too. And even outdoor visibility and viewing angles are top-notch as well. Um, speaking again, touching on those front-facing speakers, honestly, these sound just as good, if not louder, than boom sound on the HTC One devices. Um, they are JBL certified, and you've got some effects you can mess around with that. But they are complete stereo speakers, and they get ridiculously loud. And I have found myself consuming a lot more media on this device than I have on any phone in recent memory, just because the speaker makes such a big deal uh, when you are watching movies or playing games. And these are honestly some of the best speakers I've had on any device I've ever owned or ever tested, for that matter. Um, in regards to your performance and processor, there is a Snap Qualcomm Snapdragon 615, which they say is an octa-core processor, but it's technically technically made up of two quad-core processors, a one a 1.5 gigahertz, one and one being 1.0 gigahertz. The Adreno 405 at GPU, you do have two gigabytes of RAM in this thing, only 16 gigs of internal storage, but you can use a micro SD card to expand up to 128 gigabytes, which is very nice. And um, aside from that, you've got a 13 megapixel camera on the back, 8 megapixel camera up front. I tested it out, and honestly, it delivers better pictures than my Moto X 2014, which I know isn't saying a whole lot because it doesn't have the best camera. Um, but it's, I've been very happy with it. You know, the 13 megapixel camera is very serviceable. If you zoom in on it, you will see that details may not be quite as crisp as you're going to find on a flagship device. Um, and again, consider this thing is only going for 249 unlocked right now. And the front-facing 8 megapixel camera has a very wide-angle lens. And for all the selfies you put on Snapchat or whatever it may be is a really awesome performer for that in those regards as well. Um, in, in terms of the software side of things, I currently have Nova Launcher on here, but out of the box, the launcher you do get is actually very reminiscent to that of stock Android. Some of the icons are rounded off a bit, and some of the animations for the folders are a little bit different. But aside from that, uh, Alcatel really didn't throw in any bloatware. There's like maybe Facebook and Evernote were the only pre-installed applications I found on the device. So it almost feels like a Nexus product in the sense that there's no heavy skin and that there's really no bloat on the device as well. And if you even go into like the notification drawer, it's very stock Android if you hop into the settings. Again, pretty much stock Android here as well, even though it's not showing up that good um, on the display right here. Now, going into my... favorite part for the phone so far is the battery life because 
we are rocking a 2,910 milliamp hour unit, and this is the first phone I've ever owned myself, aside from the OnePlus One, which just has a monster battery, um, that I've been able to get through more than one day of use out of this thing. Because with my Moto X uh, 2014 that I sold on Swappa recently, um, granted the thing never had the best battery life, but consider that as a flagship phone from a major company, and I would have to charge that thing like at 6, 7 o'clock p.m. after turning it on at maybe, you know, 10 o'clock or 9 o'clock in the morning. Um, with this thing, I can get easily four hours of screen on time, and that's even with heavy YouTube streaming, playing games on here, and consuming a lot of media, streaming Spotify. Um, it's actually really, really impressive just how much you can get out of this phone. And when I was, like, working on this and writing my review for the LG G Flex and looking at my review for the Samsung Galaxy S6, um, both of those devices were major flagships by very big companies here in the States and really all across the world. And... I, have ne I was not able at all to get through you know, a full day of use or even two full days of use on either of those devices. And I know Alvi can vouch for me too with the HTC One M9, which had a god-awful battery. Um, so being able to get all-day battery life out of a $249 phone, which is less than half of the cost you're going to get for something like the Samsung Galaxy S6 or the HTC One Nine unlocked, um, it's really impressive. And you look at flagship devices from companies, and you look at all the specs and everything in them, they focus on the display, they focus on the cameras, they focus on making it as fast as possible, but it seems like far too often that the battery is kind of just gets pushed to the wayside and it's not a main area of focus. But then you look at something like the One Touch Idle here, which is 249 unlocked, you look at the LG G Stylo, which is roughly 268 on T-Mobile or 199 on Boost Mobile, and you're going to get all-day battery life too. And although you look at these phones and maybe the cameras aren't going to be quite as crisp as flagship devices, it's not going to be quite as snappy, the display is going to be quite as crisp, but for me personally, if I can get all-day battery life out of a phone, that means a whole lot more to me than spending $600 on a 1M9 or a Galaxy S6 and having to charge a thing like five times throughout the day if I'm just streaming YouTube videos. Um, because this is the first phone I've used in probably half a year that I felt comfortable you know, actually streaming YouTube videos on it, because I know I can stream a few YouTube videos, stream some Spotify music, and not have to worry about I'm charging the phone in a couple hours. So I know I've been going on for a really long rant right now, um, but I want to get your guys' opinion, because for me, having after having used like the Samsung Galaxy S6 and using this thing, and being able to get all-day battery life plus some out of the $249 phone, I would gladly put money down for this over a Samsung Galaxy S6, even if these two phones cost the same price, just because it's more practical, it looks nice, and it gets the job done. Um, and how often can you say you get a phone with a great display, awesome speakers, and all-day battery life? Like, you really can't say that about, you know, other flagships we've seen so far this year. So, rant done. You guys go with your opinions now. <laughs> your, your whole rant, like, all I heard was, like, blah, 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 I'm poor. I can't afford a nice... No, I'm just <laughs> No, it does look like a really cool phone. I really do want to check it out. No, I'm, I'm totally joking. I 100% espouse buying, buying lower-end or cheap devices because the reality is that even even for us power users, the the seven, the six, seven, five, six, seven hundred dollar phones are still just a luxury because we want them. Um, and it is awesome to be able. Like I used, I started using blue phones for a while as long as I could, um, and stopped because they weren't getting updates. But I would love to get my hands on an Idol Three to to check it out and and see how it works. So in, in a month or two, when you get rid of it, I'd love to check it out. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but that it, did you say it was a Snapdragon 16, 615 processor? 615, yeah. 615 and then Which, two, two gigs of RAM. Yeah, it's actually it's run like... Yeah, it's run surprisingly well so far. I mean, like, if you're swiping through the home screen, like, animations and frame rates, they do drop occasionally. But if there's a minute you hop into, like, Riptide GP2 or an application, I mean, it feels like you're running on a flagship phone. Like, there's virtually no lag when using an application itself or streaming video. It's just that if you're going through the home screens, there's, you can see frames are just dropped every now and then. But it's nothing that really detracts from how you know, useful the phone is as a whole. And, and is it 502, 501? Oh, yeah, it's um 5.0.2. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I would definitely like to check one out because $250 is an awesome price point because then we're getting into, I think anywhere below $300, we are getting into the rich where people are comfortable paying out of pocket right. and not going. Um, you know, it, it's really sad to talk to people who think that you have, oh, well, I have to put down money and then 
be on a plan for my next phone because they just assume, well, I, you know, they're a power user. They want the Galaxy. They want the, you know, the highest end. It's like, no, you can go online. You just have to research and get reviews and find the one that's good for you. So I'm, I'm very interested in it because I'm probably going to be recommending a lot of people because that 5.5 inch is just a sweet spot now, I think. Yeah, and especially, too, like I was just saying, like, it's not that often you can say you have a phone that's got a solid display, you know, awesome front-facing stereo speakers and, like, a processor and cameras that get the job done. And, I mean, plus, yeah. like, it's it's made out of plastic, and it does have kind of fake chrome on the sides, but it's really not that offensive, and the back has a brushed metal look, and it doesn't it creak or anything when you, like, bend it. Um, So it's actually built very well. And also the camera does not protrude from the back like we've seen on pretty much every other flagship so far this year. Um, so I've been insanely happy with it. Like I said, I came from a Moto X 2014, which may not have been the highest end flagship from last year, but it was still technically a superior device to the scene in technically every way. But I've been every bit as happy with this thing, and even after having used the Samsung Galaxy S6, like I said, even if these two devices were at the same price, I still might go for this just because the S6 might have more flashy features, but this is a lot more practical when considering the speakers and the battery and whatnot. Yeah, that... Oh, I, I kind of missed the Idol 3, um, the details about it, because it, it's not available over here yet for some bizarre reason. But, uh, I mean, having a look at the, the specs and stuff like that for, for that sort of price, that that's unreal sort of value for money. Yeah. And, and to be honest, it, it probably multitasks better than the, the GS6, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, like, like I said, like multitasking, if you have an application, you have it open, it'll, like, a couple hours or so and you do open it, it does take a minute to get to it, but I mean, it's maybe like a second delay or something, that's nothing that really makes it like, oh god, this phone is so slow, I can't use it, I mean, it's not, if you put it side by side of the S6, yeah, the S6 is probably going to look like it's more fluid, but in raw yeah. performance, I mean, like, playing games during apps, you're getting generally the same experience on this thing right here. Yeah, how does the G4 feel about your cheaper unit? <laughs> <laughs> um, the G4 likes the phone. I mean, plus the G4, I haven't got a review unit for it yet, but the G4 has um has really liked this phone so far. That's good. The only thing, though, the only, the only thing that does annoy me is that the power button is on the left side. Um, that's, I think, a personal preference. It's just that most of the times power buttons are on the right side, so I'm constantly moving my thumb over here to turn the display off, and I'm getting the volume button. So that's the only gripe I've had so far with the phone. And again, that's just a preference thing for me. So, yeah, Flip I've been... Over. What's that? Flip it over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you actually can do that. Yeah, you can flip it over and have the power button on the right side. That's the awesome thing about the phone. And, like, it still looks cool. I mean, like, it's still, it's weighted nicely because I was, like, even if you're holding it upside down, the weight distribution is, like, very even through the phone, so you can pick it up and use it upside down. And, like, I actually did that a couple times so far. I'm like, oh, what's, like, what am I touching with my pinky? Oh, yeah, that's a camera because I'm holding the phone upside down. But um, I know it sounds like a gimmicky feature, but it actually works really well, especially because um, at my bed on my night table, like, I have a charger there. And I can plug it in to the wall and still be able to use it, you know, front facing up with a charger here because it rotates. So it sounds like a gimmicky feature, something like Samsung throwing a phone, but it's actually the, has turned out to be very, very useful in more than one situation so far. See, in my opinion, especially having used, uh, spent a couple days with the device with the Snapdragon 410 in it, and seeing how well that performs, you know, playing. Uh, I don't know if you have, if you own the racing game Need for Speed um, Most Wanted. Red, but if you don't download it, because it's a really okay. good uh, illustration. I think it's like five bucks, but it's a real illustration of what that processor can do. It, it will handle it with no stutter, um, presuming it's you know geared the same way that the one I have is. Um, but what I want to see is uh, this. I want to see a slightly lower end processor for a slightly lower price, rather than like what they tried to do with the One Plus, which was practically no profit and trying to squeeze the latest specs in, but you're sacrificing everything, including being able to open up sales for everyone. Um, so I want to see stuff like this at 200, 200 to $250 is a super sweet spot in price, and you're getting a legitimately use, usable device. You're not sacrificing... Um, because up until, like, this year, the 200 bucks we got you a budget phone. <laughs> yeah, well, there's also a... Uh... 4.7 inch screen size version of the Idol 3. It's not available in the States, but it does come in at a lower price tag around like 200 bucks. And it's like 1 gig of RAM, the Snapdragon 410 processor, and like an 8 megapixel rear facing camera. Um, so that's not out in the States, or 13 megapixel rear facing camera still. So that's not in the States yet, but they do have like a kind of smaller, cheaper version of the phone available in other countries right now. 
I, I just want to chime in one more comment here, which is that uh, part of the reason I think that 200 or 250 bucks is such a, a sweet spot as far as price point is that um, if people have been for people who've been buying smartphones for a while, um, 200 to 250 bucks has really been a decent price. Um, even for an on-contract subsidized price, um, yeah. up until everybody um, started coming out with their, um, you know, like T-Mobile monthly payment plans and so on, um, it wasn't uncommon at all to pay 200 bucks for 300 bucks for a flagship phone, um, and then still have it subsidized into your monthly contract. So to be able to buy a phone outright that's that's completely, um, you know, serviceable, as Joe said, gets the job done. Um, for 200 bucks is uh, is potentially a game changer. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I've been very happy with it. Yeah, and especially you know, like what you're talking about, Joe. Like everything, it's all it all works, and you get all day battery. You know, how much more instant can instant be? Like pretty much all these phones are equivalent across the board, no matter what processors they're putting them. In, other than just a crap phone that's going to like bail on you, you know, or something. But for the most part, everything just runs. So give me all day battery life. Put it at 200, 250 bucks, and let's move on. Exactly. And hopefully what we'll start seeing with these lower, not lower end, but you know what I mean, lower end flagships. Um, hopefully what we'll start seeing is a shift because I know before if you wanted good uh, development support, you got, say you didn't want to spend a lot of money, but you wanted good development. You wanted you know, support for signage and mod and other custom ROMs. You were buying last season's flagship for a little bit cheaper because you know you've got this, the ROM support. Well, now hopefully since we've got all these um, really, really... Um, good uh, non I wouldn't say flagship but these really good uh, mid to high end uh, devices hopefully we'll see a lot of development going on for them and a lot of support taking them in I think the only really older devices that are getting good ports um, for the current operating systems are Nexus is now um, and hopefully we'll start to see a shift where these these budget devices budget flagships as it were are getting support um, you know, through the ages, because, you know, for those of us, especially a budget phone is going to be more, is, I mean, it's it's just a given that a budget phone is going to be uh, more resilient than a flagship phone. I mean, our flagship phones are currently mostly made out of glass. <laughs> so those are going to be lasting a long time anyway. Right. Well, it's just really encouraging, too, to see devices like the LG G Stylo or the Alcatel One Touch Idol 3, because even just like a year or two ago, devices like this that you're getting so much out of and a really good user experience for that low of a price tag was pretty much impossible. And now we're just in 2015 and seeing devices like this and also the Zenfone 2 and other such phones, Moto G like that, um, being able to pay under $300, completely unlocked, and still get a very comparable user experience, even superior in some ways such as battery life to a $600 plus dollar phone, um, it's just really encouraging to see where the whole budget phone market is going to go throughout the rest of the year into 2016 as well. Yeah, I think we're going to have to re rename budget phones versus mm -hmm. flagships. You know, you're talking about you know $600 for a flagship when what you're holding in your hand is a flagship from you know exactly. what four months ago. And, you know, <laughs> is that budget or is it flagship? So, <laughs> uh, but no, good talk about budget phones in general. They're still called let's call them mid-range flagships, budget phones, whatever we want to call them. But good talk about that, gentlemen. Uh, thanks, Joe and Fred, for your LG G Stylo and Alcatel One Touch Idol 3. But that does conclude our show uh, of What's Ruined for tonight. Thanks again for watching and listening. If you guys are catching us later on all that kind of stuff, uh, no, event notes will be live and all that kind of stuff, so you can check links out and see what we're talking about later in the show. Again, hashtag MCOJBrew. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or concerns or rebuttals about anything we've talked about tonight, but before we close out everything, let's find out what's going on the next week for these guys. Back from the dead, Fred, what's going on for you next week, bud? Oh, a little bit more of the same. Um, uh, living, working. Um, my Well, I guess, no, my son's graduation is coming up in a couple of weeks. Um, I'll be finishing off a uh, full review of the Stylo phone, um, so look for that on the website in the next week or thereabouts. And uh, I'm just going to give one another little tease that um, I'll be attending CE Week in two weeks and change um, in Manhattan. Um, all kinds of cool consumer electronics, and just uh, I'll I'll just tease everybody by saying that I'm starting to hear from the vendors and PR 
reps that are going to be there, and there is like an unprecedented amount of, of cool, new, innovative stuff. <laughs> I'm seeing everything from smart pens to uh, to some music devices uh, to uh, uh, an intelligent beer delivery system. So I, I, I'm very much looking forward to this, and we'll keep you posted. I'm still trying to find a way to get up there so I can be your videographer for the week, but I just don't think it'll happen. So <laughs> I'm excited to see your see your coverage of CU Week, though. 2 a.m. Uh, it'll be Greg, cool. What's going on over there? Well, I guess it's now 3 a.m. Greg, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It, it, it what's is going on with you this week, bud? <laughs> um, yeah, it's uh, obviously W. I mean WWDC this week, not WWE. <laughs> WWDC. Um, yeah. <laughs> on Monday, Monday, Monday. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so the, the, obviously there's that to uh, uh, probably get trolled on G plus for the rest of the week, um, and from Tony, just, ex just accept it. Yeah. <laughs> expect it. He said, just expect it, not accept it. <laughs> um, the part two of uh, technology and healthcare was published today, so that's the Samsung. Um, so ju just to be an extra troll, I'll work on the the Apple. Part three uh, this week and get that out this week. Um, so there's there's plenty of stuff coming from uh, your mobile cup of Joe. <laughs> excellent, <Ooh>. excellent. <laughs> Always a good read. Can't wait to see uh, what you have to say about our wrestling. I mean the Apple event coming up soon. <laughs> so, uh, Spec Sheet Tony, what's going on for you this week, bud? Um, well, actually, I, I'm not sure whether I'll make it next week because on, I think, Thursday, uh, the 11th, whatever day that is, uh, we are taking off. My family is going to vacation in Florida. So we're going to be at families ha at, a fa at our family's home. So I may still be able to join in just depending on what the schedule is, but I can't you know, promise, so I don't know what we're going to be doing. Um, but we're going to be there for about a week. I'm really excited. My son is going to get to meet his great-grandmother on my dad's side, her husband, and her for the first time. Um, my wife is going to get to meet all those people for the first time. So I'm very excited for that trip. Uh, it'll be his first trip on a plane, and it feels a little early, but we got, we got our you know little, uh, little masks for him to wear just in case, you know, just to keep him nice and help. Uh, we did just get, uh, I just got in my wife's new phone a couple days ago. Anyone on T-Mobile who's watching or listening, I don't know if they're still doing it, but a couple days ago I was just happened to be looking at the upgrade options on T-Mobile and online they have the Samsung Galaxy S6 128 gigabyte for only $99 down. Um, it's not actually discounted, it's just the down payment that's discounted, so the, the $100 it's usually $199 down. Uh, that $100 is rolled back into the principal, but it still $99 down is less than you're going to pay anywhere to get 128 gigabyte anything. So when I when I saw that, I I said I got to get that. She'd been having weird issues with her One Plus One, so got her upgraded. That uh, came in the mail this week, so she's been having fun playing with that. She's been wanting a better camera on her phone. Mm -hmm. uh, the One Plus One is respectable, but. You just can't beat uh, Samsung's camera software, especially. So, um, having some fun playing with that, testing out some new blue devices. Got a couple blue devices in the mail for you guys here. Um, you know, we'll see a review from Chuck and Alvi. And uh, other than that, yeah, just uh, excited for vacation. So, not a whole lot going on. <laughs> yeah, j just those few things, right? <laughs> yeah, just just those, you know, three hundred words. I just. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mobile Cup of Joe, what's going on for you this next week, bud? Um, let's see, I've got the G4's graduation party tomorrow, <laughs> graduation Sunday, <laughs> and then work Monday, and then the rest of the week is going to be probably playing my PS4, because that'll be here Tuesday or Wednesday, and that's probably going to be the uh, entire rest of my week there. I'm catching up on all the games and whatnot that I missed. Um, so yeah, just since summer's here, more Mobile Cup of Joe content. Hopefully, since I did get the Remix 1. OS 1.5 beta, hoping to get a video of that on the channel uh, maybe Wednesday, Thursday time frame. And then also tomorrow morning, there will be the video, uh, video review of the LG G Flex 2, which I'm very happy with how it turned out. Not happy with the phone, but the review is pretty, so there's that. <laughs> And then also want to do a very quick thank you to our sponsors once again for tonight's show, 
which is audible.com. Again, if you guys do want to get a free audiobook and a free 30-day trial of Audible, head on over to www.audibletrial.com forward slash mobile cup of joe. And also, I did get an email in my um, inbox today that Amazon Echo now supports Audible, so go ahead and if you are one of the, like, maybe ten other people liking you that have an Amazon Echo, um, you can now listen to Audible audiobooks on there as well. So again, thank you to Audible for sponsoring tonight's show. www.audibletrial.com forward slash mobile cup of joe. We'll put that on the socials as well to get your free audiobook and a 30-day trial of the service. Excellent. Yeah, both of you on, on the Amazon Echo, check that out. So. <laughs> that, that actually reminds me as well, um, not really an official, official sponsor of Mobile Cup of Joe, but pretty much a sponsor. Um, if you haven't seen Alvi's review, watch his review on the beard and hair serum. It is fantastic. I use it every day. Alvi's been using it. Uh, I know Chuck has been enjoying it as well. Um, watch it. I've gotten several things now from uh, from Blue Lotus Botanicals. Uh, baby soap, which I'm not sure is advertised as baby soap, but we'll have to, you know, get the link for that specifically, and uh, some hair stuff for my for my wife. So, awesome botanical, uh, what would you call them? Just uh, botanical solutions, uh, serums, uh, things for your daily life. Uh, fantastic. All natural, organic ingredients, certified by a master herbalist. Fantastic Blue Lotus <laughs> products. I, I uh, wholeheartedly support and agree with you there, Tony. Uh, but that does and, conclude our show. Thank you guys again so much for watching. Hashtag MCOJ Brew on all the socials if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or rebuttals. But for Chuck, Fred, Greg, Joe, Tony, and myself, that concludes our show. We'll see you guys next week at 9, 8, 9 p.m. Eastern. Good night. Good night. See you guys.